we're on the lookout for the neighbor's dog should we see it what's up guys so this video i thought knock out a few things I had some people ask about the fyp the front yard pasture which is there i had already done a bunch of short clips about things like fencing breeding because it was time sensitive uh breeding fencing milking none of those things make one whole video so i'm gonna throw some stuff together i don't know milk and breeding and fencing wait a second <clears throat> let me do my central high milk and breeding and fencing make a little video of that so yeah bunch of little tidbits how about that what's up guys welcome back before we do anything else go ahead, click all the buttons like subscribe thumbs up tell a friend tell a neighbor tell a stranger share us on social media somebody was asking me yesterday about breeding so and i know if you're a huge operation you're just probably throwing your buck out with all your does and you're you know you hope everybody gets bred and you have a rough what probably two week window of this is when everybody's due within these two weeks if you're smaller like us we have 11 does the bucks and the does they share a common fence that fence has a smaller fence on the inside of it so nobody can back up to it and nobody can get pieces and parts connected because it'll happen the doe will back up to the fence and the buck will manipulate and maneuver and it happens anyway so we breed in the fall late october early november for now i think this year we might go a little bit later into the year so we get a better chance of warmer weather babies so for us we're always watching our girls around that time frame uh, when they come in the heat we're going to pull that girl into a stall and we might pull two or three of them into their individual stalls and we're going to put one buck in with one doe and we're going to stand there and we're going to watch we like to have at least three good fall offs and if you've ever seen the bucks breed the ladies you'll know what i'm talking about they do their business and then right at the end they're like Ugh! and kind of i'll probably cut that out so we like to see three good fall offs uh, and then we know exactly the day they bred the time they bred who they were bred to we have three bucks if i throw all my girls in with my bucks yes they might all three breed her somebody's gonna take you have no idea at that point who the dad is and you have to know that in order to do your adga registration so we get a doe in a stall we bring a buck to her they do the deed we know the day the time and who the daddy is it's that simple for us i do understand there's some people don't have a, a separate area you know you have your bucks way over there and your does clear over here this is another one of those things you have to know your animals we know when they're coming into heat the nigerian dwarf can come into heat all year i think probably the strongest in the fall so know your doe boys are always ready I think we all know that. So you have to know your does. How does she act normally? And how is she acting now? You'll see a lot of tail wagging. You'll see what a lot of people call her acting bucky. If she's mounting other does. If she's rubbing herself all over other does, she's trying to dominate. They'll also get more vocal. We have a couple does that are always vocal, so that wouldn't help us. So this is knowing your does. Sprinkles is the worst. Screaming about everything all the time for seemingly no reason. So if she's standing over by the buck pen, just being loud that's not going to count as a sign for us that she's in heat not every doe will go bucky you just you got to know them you got to watch them uh watch some videos maybe figure out what it looks like but pay attention to your girls we've studied in the past so we did what i think a lot of people do is we brought the stud onto the property and when you're paying to stud you're going to want him to be with your girls 24 7 uh, to make sure he's getting the job done or at least you have a chance of getting the job done because if you're paying whatever you pay in your area for a two-week stud that's all you get if you don't have a buck on your property you might have some low-key mellow does in heat it might almost not be noticeable however if you have some does that are like in low-key heat and you bring that buck on the property they're going to go zero to 60 like that and it is going to be insane you will know we have one girl well everybody knows miss struzel now side note we are referring to them as the royal family at this point you have miss struzel the herd queen you have big prince little prince and the princess every time we've studied with struzel she's on that buck as soon as he hits the property she's the first one bred every single time they, that buck coming on property if they're if it's if they're close to heat they're gonna they're gonna ramp up real quick and go right in however we had so many issues with stuff we had one good stud season the guy was like taking i don't have to feed him and i don't have to deal with him for a month or a month and a half or two months whatever you guys bring him back whenever he was amazing so we had him for a long time the other studying that we did was a nightmare none of the paperwork was in order <sighs> It was a nightmare. So now we have our own studs, little stallions out there. So when these ladies get hot to trot, they're right out there on that fence next to the boys. So yeah, so when the girls get out there and they're rubbing that fence and they pull them in here, shack them up with the boy, watch them, make sure they do what you want them to do. And we'll either move them to the next stall or we'll put him back. If you can do it, do it. It's the best thing ever. This year has been the best timing for us. We've had our timing down to almost the day. Um, a couple of them went before, a couple of them went the day after, and a couple of them went right, or one went right on her dude. So control what you can. 
And now it's time for the cheesy segue from breeding to fencing. That was it. That's the segue. Talk about this fence again one of my favorite channels is blue cactus dairy goats tell crystal i said hi but derek taught me via watching their channel that this five strand electric fence does not have to be complicated if you think about a normal electrical cycle with a negative and a positive i'll probably get this wrong but i believe the electric has to be going one way and have an endpoint or whatever whereas with the solar panel this is a solar extreme it's as simple as if you watch anybody's solar videos the companies that are putting out their videos you know you need this heavy gauge wire like this here which is pretty thick if you can see based on the size of my thumb. I have a normal size thumb, so that wire is pretty thick. You're supposed to use that to run to your fence and connect all your strands. So I was watching Derek because I know he did a really good video on how they do their fence. And he just took a normal piece of wire. This is the same exact wire as this. And just tied all of the strands together. So this runs there all the way down to the road. 300 feet across and then back up and it just ends let's just walk over there let's do it this way from the charger this way just goes down across here don't you worry about my tire woo <laughs> love you um, that's gonna be a baby toy at some point so it just goes down across the bridge. Now the only problem I have with the bridge is there's not generally enough moisture in the bridge to finish the connection uh, to ground out the animal. So really if they wanted to they could walk through right here. They don't know that so they will not get shocked on the bridge generally. Uh, if it's been raining and it's wet out it'll give them a zap. But anyway. When you're running electric like this, for, for off the solar fence charger, you can just end it. That's it. It doesn't go any further than this right here. It starts and stops on either side of the fence opening. So one post is there, one post is there. I did not know this was a possibility. I thought I needed a full complete circuit. When it sends out an electric pulse from the charger up there, It'll go that way, and it'll go this way. It doesn't have to go all the way back around. There's no way I could have done this pasture without that knowledge. So, thanks brother. So now they have all this, all this beautiful grass here that they can just chomp all day long. I mow this once a year in the spring. I already mowed it this year, and that's just to kick off grass growth. You guys know, as soon as you mow your grass that first time, then it just goes crazy after that, so. That's the concept. I mow it up as high as I can. Just knock the tops off and kick off that growth. Other than that, they kind of have that sixth sense, you know. I've only seen one goat ever touch it, and that was Tick. She licked it. But I don't know if they can hear it or they sense it, but they don't go They don't go near it. I lie. The older goats will go near it. They'll eat as close to it as they possibly can without touching it, but they never touch it, so. And now we shall transition from fencing to milking. I'm just working with what I got here, people. <laughs> All right, however, in the milking section of this little debacle that I'm doing, there will be a little baby jelly bean update. So stick around for that because she's adorable. You might say she's the most adorable. This is the giant puddle of cuteness. Someday y'all, I will have a milk parlor and goats on a beach. Life goals, goats on a beach, on a warm beach. This is what you call a professional. She knows the drill. She knows what's what's the haps. Hi. What are you guys what are you guys doing? You look suspicious. Alright, now this little lady. She kicks sometimes, not usually, but I just do a string tie on the leg. And let's not get fancy because I don't do that. So that goes right in the crack right there. Specifically designed to hold that string. Give her a little bit of a dust off.
So we milk the goats. I'm just gonna do this in order, however you wanna look at it. I already have milk in trays in the freezer. I could edit this and flip it around and make it look like I filtered the milk and poured it into the trays and blah, blah, blah. But the milk's in the, in the trays already, so let's just start with that step. Try to get it all, try to get it all in one shot. So this is just hot water to help release the, the cubes from the tray. I left that one in there a little too long, Got a little extra melty. How many of you are old enough to remember the old metal ice cube trays that had like the lever handle that would break the ice cubes free and you pour them out? I've cleaned up my mess. First, maybe a little backstory. This is the, I don't know how to say that, Kuchin Profi? Kuchin Profi? Kuchin Profi? It's a backstory time. Backstory stuff. Shameless plug again. I got this because I was watching uh, Weedem and Reap. Go check out her channel, uh, Danelle, you're awesome. She uses these, so that's kind of why I bought it to start with, but whatever steel they use, I've watched this thing a thousand times and no rust, good, good stainless. Yeah, that's it, that's it for that. Back to the video. Since I'm not doing anything for human consumption, I just use one paper towel as a filter. I'm just trying to catch all the big chunks, hair and dirt basically. So I know I only, I only need enough to fill one tray and I know that's about 14 ounces. I usually make a mess of this. Ta-da! And then pop that in the freezer. So the rest of this is going to be for Miss Jellybean so she can eat throughout the day and the night. That's probably gonna be a little bit too much for jelly bean. <laughs> so that's it guys, that's processing milk. I'll pop a soap video in and I'll pop like a goat video in at the end here. You can go see how we use the frozen goat milk. But other than that, that's it for this video. If you haven't yet, go click all the buttons, like, subscribe, thumbs up, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a stranger. Find us on Etsy, Facebook, Instagram. Y'all have a good day. Do something fun. Thanks for watching. Check out the next video. If you're local, come see us Saturday. We're in Urbana, Ohio at the Champaign County Fairground. So come check us out. You can meet little old me and stuff. Update on Jelly Bean. She has a respiratory, well, she's having a respiratory issue. I don't know if it's an infection or not. The vet put her on New Floor, which is basically an antibiotic that will help take care of that. Other than that, she's doing really well. Gaining weight. She's up, what are you up, five ounces? Six ounces? She was born at 24 ounces. She dropped down to 22, and I think she's back up to 28, 27, 28. <laughs> All right, enough of you. Your, too, your cuteness is too much. Your cuteness is too much. Small doses, yes.